I've got something interesting to show you today. It's not just another crawler. This could be the start of something actually new in RSC. It's something that I don't know that we've seen before. Think about this. Technology's been changing. It used to be you'd need a power supply for your servo and your receiver, and you'd have a nitro car, and then we had electrics, and, and even then you still used to have the separate batteries. You had your NICAD for your motor, and then you had your uh, four double A's or whatever it was for the receiver and the servo, one servo. Then we came to a new kind of age, and we're used to seeing the TRX4 type thing, the SCX10, which I guess was the granddaddy of the modern crawlers. Uh, we started to see two speed, and we saw Diflox, thanks Traxxas, and now a bunch of them are doing it. Uh, Dig has been around for a good 15 plus years, and I mean, even in the nitros, when you brake, there was a disc on the rear, and so, oh yeah, there was a disc on, on uh, one of the outdrives from the um, transmission or the center diff somewhere. Uh, and, and the servo would clamp the brake. That's how your nitros brake. And now we come to 2024, where you're now starting to see vehicles that combine some of the stuff. Like, think about this. The SCX10-3 has a dig and a two-speed transmission. TRX4 also has a two-speed transmission and front rear diff locks. And sometimes we'll see one or both. I mean, even my BRX4 has a two-wheel drive, just rear, and then all-wheel drive, front and rear, and then the front from the transmission has that overdrive. So there are interesting ways of combining the stuff. All right, so now that I've got you thinking about all the tech, let this thing kind of blow your mind. Are you ready? This is really cool. This is the Yikong 4103 Pro. I think that's what it is. I'll stick it on the screen if it wasn't that. I forgot the box, so I'm far away from home at the moment. And it's not just another crawler. Yes, it's an unlicensed, unfortunately, Brabus badged um, Mercedes wagon, but it's what's underneath that's actually quite interesting. Now, I started this talking about the electronics, and it has what is becoming ubiquitous now, a 550 motor. It's a high turn motor too, I think, 37 turn or something like that. We've got a front steering servo, and check this out, there's a, the steering damper is on the on the actual uh, steering line there, which is amazing. I love it. So, and you can buy these as parts, but I haven't seen it on an RTR before. It has two-speed transmission. It has front and rear diff lock. But what is interesting about this car is that it has disc brakes, functional rear disc brakes. I'm going to show you this as a crawler, and then I want you to think about what else functional disc brakes might be useful for in future. I don't know how well we can see this, but check it out. We've got the standard cable coming out of the diffs somewhere. All right, so you, there's, a, there's a cable here, and anyone who's familiar with these cars might notice that that, and there's a front one that's kind of hiding in the front too. They're for your diff lock, and, and they actuate on these rather attractive scale looking diffs. But you've got another two sets of cables here that come out to a spring, and there is a disc on the wheel that spins with the wheel, and this thing, when it pulls, it just, it, um, it grips just like this brakes. It's so cool. All right, so let me show you. What you do is you undo the, the body like this. There's a screw that undoes. Now it comes. This radio you're starting to get familiar with now, uh, it's the first one I've had, but these are becoming common and I'm seeing these. There are 11 or 12 channels. You have adjustable drag brake on the fly, which is cool. But one of the things I like about this, I guess the, the biggest party trick of this thing is this servo here. So this servo here, it actuates one side or the other. And this is just to help it turn better. So it's kind of like a temporary dig, but it doesn't disconnect drive. Power switch for this fella is just here. There we go. Now, I think we're currently unlocked, that's good. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at the turning circle first. Full right, this is uh, unlocked and just a full turn. Till we're straight. And we'll mark the inside with a line. We'll put it back, wheels in the exact same position. Now the wheels are in the same position. We engage that rear locking thingy. Here we go again. See how the, it still turns, but just not much. There we go. Turn that off. Now, there's where it ended up 
without the locking thing. That's where it was parked at the start. The front wheels ended up here uh, without the, the locking jibber, and there it is there. So it really is quite a big difference. Instead of being there, it's all the way in here. So that's quite good, isn't it? I'm not actually sure. I'd love a manual for this. I thought, because that does the rear diff lock, that this guy do the front, but you don't see this move at all. Ooh, okay, something's moving, but there's a problem. All right, let's have a look. So the problem I've just found is that this front diff lock servo is burning hot. The rear's fine, front has an issue. So I've worked out the problem with front diff lock. This is the front diff lock servo, and the travel is really minimal, right? It's like five mil, six mil. That's channel seven, which on this fella, but the problem is this servo is faulty. And so what I've done is I've unplugged it from channel seven and we are going to leave it. I've bolted it up and it's gonna just stay locked. So for this demo, we're gonna keep it locked in front. The rear is unlocked. Uh, we can lock it with channel eight, uh, except when we're using the disc brakes, which prevents it from locking. Now there's a trim button here. Let's turn that thingy on. Now you watch, this is the servo that does the disc. This one here is the disc brakes. I've got a trim button here that lets you adjust trim uh, to match your steering. So as we steer, there we go. So that's right. Now, if you need to adjust it further, I'll just turn it off. You can undo this grub screw on either of these and just pull the cable through a bit and that'll let you adjust it. But out of the box, it's actually pretty good. Second speed is this fella here, channel three. Channel four is the little steery thing. Channel five, there are three lights. Let's move out of the sun a little bit. All right, so the first switch, it's just back off, the lights are off. Middle switch, the lights are medium, forward, and they're on bright, so that's really fun. This, I don't know what it does yet. There's a thumb turn, that's channel five. Channel five is not connected, so you've got an open channel here, which is ready for a winch, yeah. Um, that's great, so you can use this as a winch. It beeps when it's in the middle. That can be in and out at whatever speed you like. And you just, what you do is, you'd stick a second ESC here somewhere, run it off that channel, off channel five. Then you've got your winch in and out, and happy days, that's great. Um, now, channel nine is also not connected. Channel 10 is not connected. So these guys don't do anything, this dial and this button, they don't do anything. Uh, trim is for that one as we noticed and uh, channel 11 drag brake this will adjust the aggressiveness the aggression of the drag brake we can test that right now channel 11 is turned right down now we'll turn it all the way up let's see what happens okay so all the way up it's a bit counterintuitive but all the way up for trail and all the way down for stiffer drag brake and it feels like about a 50% drag brake compared to all the other ones you can get um, we've got channel reverses for these uh, three, four, five, and six, um, and you've got uh, forward reverse and brake. So you've got your driving mode here. In uh, sorry, forward reverse brake on one, and then lithium ion two. So we flip that to. I guess you do this when it's off, ideally, but you turn that on for lithium ion. Oh, sorry, uh, lipos, lithium polymer, of whatever. And here, forward reverse is down. Forward reverse brake, I think. Oh yeah, forward reverse brake. So if we just want crawling, you turn number one up. There we go. So now I think we're sorted. Um, right, so diff locks, ignore, um, set up for lipo and forward reverse, get your throttles trimmed and whatnot, get your rear braking thing trimmed. You can uh, do your lights. You've got a spare channel for winch there. We've got our disc brake, we've got our high and low. Why am I excited? Well, two reasons. One, this still, according to the rules of at least the RCCA rule set, this is still legal in class one. It's not a dig, it doesn't disconnect drive, so we're still okay according to the rules. And again, it doesn't lock it, it just clamps it and makes it much harder to turn. So that's interesting. But now let's think this through a little bit. Just picture if you had a fast car that had a servo for each wheel, so you had four disc brakes and you had traction control that could individually brake each wheel, much like a real car. I just see a potential for applications here for stability for the fast stuff. It's just, it's an exciting time. Who would have thought? 
This is a cheap car too, relatively cheap. I say cheap, it's a it's on the cheap end of a full fat crawler. $583 delivered I paid from Ali for this thing. Uh, that's quite a chunk cheaper than all the big name stuff. It's a shame they ripped off the body. That has a full interior and completely opaque windows too. What a shame. Like there are seats and stuff in here. You can see the molding for it. They, they did the interior, the dash, there's even a rear view mirror in there, but you can't see any of it because it's opaque windows and it doesn't just peel off either. It seems to be a frosted paint. Such a strange decision. But again, it's cheap and I'm not really complaining. Um, it is the Fly Sky lighting system that couples with the receiver, so this thing gives you everything. It's just such a nice little set. Everything's waterproof. 32 turn 550, it is not 37. Uh, and an XT60 plug. Oil filled shocks. Well, it says oil filled, they're actually not. Or if they are, it, it's, it may as well have the viscosity of water. They're even adjustable. Like, it's just so well thought out, isn't it? Now, it doesn't come with a manual, which is a shame because there are just so many channels on this thing. But when you turn it on, you've got your steering, but when you press this button here, channel whatever it is, it beeps as, it, as you're driving. But, oh no, not that one, sorry, this fella. Yeah, so it beeps to let you know that this disc brake setup is engaged. But look, you can see this disc brake servo. There we go. So as you steer, it locks the inside wheel, which I think is fabulous. So as well as that, we've got disc brakes. And once we engage, oh, I can't engage the rear disc brake until this thing's disabled. It's very clever. So they've actually got mixing out of the box here. Why can't I engage dip for lock in the rear? Well, if we had that thing on, it was gripping the, the discs as we drive, diff lock's going to override that. So it's just wearing out the, the rear discs unnecessarily. <laughs> rubber, rubber mirrors and stuff too. Oh, now I forgot to bring some of this stuff because my pup's at a hospital at the moment. So I'm just killing a few hours here, but you can actually cut these bottom bumper off and replace it with a harder plastic bumper that they include with the pack. So you get that this no instruction book and the radio which has such a beautiful wheel on it too so i know this is a bit of an unusual review but uh, i just thought i'd introduce it to the car really i'm excited about the disc brakes and particularly for what we might see in faster cars i don't know if anyone's realized this yet i'm sure they have because i have surely others have but i'm just excited at the idea of four wheel disc brake traction control the software needs to be written for it, obviously, but we've got the technology now. It just seems finally within reach. This is, this is a first for radio control, so that's exciting. I might write an article about this one, I think, because then I can give you a lowdown on what all the bits do, so watch out for that. Let's get this onto some rocks and see how it drives. I'm noticing straight away the body roll. Remembering we're locked in the front. I would have started with it unlocked, but that's all right. Not a scientific drive, this. <laughs> so maybe some preload on the rear could help, but it looks good. We're going to need to lock the rear now to help it walk up. Actually, I was talking about um, clones and stuff before, wasn't I? These are Hyrax clones, these tires, of course. I think we could use a bit of preload in the rear. The tire foams are single stage by the feel of it and quite firm. All right, let's turn diff lock off. I'm going to hit this disc brake locking thing, because I want to bring the front round. Let's see how it works. Oh yeah, you can see, it. oh, that worked really well. I'm actually going to keep it engaged. The beeping's kind of annoying, but I want it to lock the... Oof. Well, I guess that's that, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez. Um, let me see here. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, literally. And give it a little climb up. This is really not a hectic rock crawler. Um, we're going to lock the rear. Those sliders are non-existent. The side steps there, they're kind of like uh, if they were alu side steps in real life. They're just part of the legs and body. They're not going to last terribly long. So you could put some metal ones under them, attached to the chassis, I suppose. I really would like to see a bit more preload on the on the suspension because it's lifting that wheel way too high in the front. 
We do have a 5 amp brick in it, 2S. It takes 2 and 3S by the way. Alright, unlocking the rear, pressing our little disc brake. Now you can't see that we're locking up so much, because on rock the, uh, the braking is quite strong. Just going to hold that for a sec. Drag brake's at maximum right now and it's still walking down the hill. But if I turn this drag brake down... <laughs> there you go. I'm going to turn the drag brake back up and lock the rear. Remembering the front's already locked. We'll come up on the side and see how that goes. Already lifting a wheel. All right. So if you get this car, you're getting an awfully good amount of value. See, okay, watch this. Watch how much the body rocks. See how it kind of bounces? It's probably easier in a higher speed to see, but you watch how the body's like, um, you watch how the body's kind of jostling. It kind of bounces like it's on a ball. We need thicker oil or any oil. There may not be much shock oil in this. So what I really want is probably 30 weight shock oil. I'm off the brakes here, we're just on, on the drag brake. That's pretty nice. Let's just add a bit of preload to the rear. Now, I didn't mention this, well, I don't think I did. These are portal axles. They're lovely scale looking things too. I've added seven or eight mils of preload on the rear and on the same kind of problems. See how the front wheel isn't lifting anywhere near as much. You see that? Like it still lifts as it probably unavoidably will. Are we locked? Yes, we are. Bad, bad demo cream. <laughs> but I will say, okay, so we're going to use this again. Oh, it turns so nicely. It's almost like dig. Um, it's vastly more controllable with that preload. So add seven or eight mils of preload, add 30 weight shock oil, and I think you'll have a much, much better time with it. Okay, so we're unlocked in the rear, locked in the front. It looks really good though. I tell you what, it looks good. <laughs> and again, 583 delivered. I can't buy a TRX4 for under $1,000 new, unless it's a sport, and they're about 850. So 583, man. I mean, the RGTs that we've looked at, uh, I think we talked about them recently. They're more expensive by at least 100 bucks than this thing, I'm pretty sure. I can't test that right now because we're out in the middle of nowhere, but... Uh, the value on this car is just unreal. Oh, and look at those, look at those lights while it's aiming at us. Or not. <laughs> so it's just the headlights that get brighter. What about tail lights? We've got, let's see here, off, on, and then no change. So forward, no change, there's reverse. And I guess if we change the profile to braking, let's have a quick look. Okay, so now it does forward and brake. Oh, you get brake lights. But only in the forward reverse uh, brake profile. If you just go forward reverse for um, crawling, no brake lights for you. But that makes sense, right? I just realized we didn't talk about speed. This is first. We're on 2S, of course. Here's second. That's a very usable speed. Nothing shabby about it. And if we turn the, the uh, drag brake right off. <laughs> this is just, it's a very satisfying car. Now, let's turn this disc brake thing on. <laughs> I love it. So this thing is not without its issues. Clearly having a burnt out servo was bad luck at the start, but I'll just replace that. And I expect most sellers would give you a warranty swap for it. You just have to demonstrate the problem on camera. I'm not going to bother. I have a bunch and I mean, I'm using this for YouTube, so whatever, but I'm going to swap that servo. So I've got front rear diff lock, but in my experience, and I've got quite a bit at this point with trail driving in particular, I like the front to be locked most of the time anyway. It's that rear one that you want to unlock to help give you that maneuverability. And isn't it sweet to be able to then have that, oh yeah, that locking, <laughs> to have that locking rear option as well as just unlocking it. How would that fare in a class one comp? It's quite a heavy beastie. And if you drove it as is, you wouldn't fare too well, but it wouldn't be terrible. 
It does have that full interior. It's a real, I don't know what they were thinking making these frosted windows with the full interior. It's got the steering wheel painted like stickers and everything. It looks really good in there, but I can't get to it. Um, as a class one, I mean, you'd cut this off and put the higher bumper on. That it comes with. You'd put oil in the shocks. You'd make sure your servos all work, of course. And then you'd just have at it. I think it'd go all right. You would need smaller tires though. Uh, these are 4.56 on 2.2 wheels. You can't have bigger than 4.09. So you'd need to go smaller on the tires. Totally doable though. And I think worth it. This, uh, this, disc brake, this disc brake thing though, makes the price of entry for me totally worth it, regardless of the rest of the little foibles and niggles and whatever. What an interesting car. What an interesting idea that disc brakes now kind of work. They're not like proper like, good disc brakes, but they also could be. You've just got cheap, like it's just a, like a washer is the disc and the pads will be nothing special. They just won't be. They grip well enough to kind of slow it down. And we saw the difference on the gravel, how well it turns, didn't we? This is a very interesting vehicle. I'm excited to see where disc brakes end up on RC cars, particularly fast ones. Can you imagine the, the infraction with that rear handbrake, but also with four wheel disc brake traction control or any kind of track car, really? It's just exciting. I think it's pretty decent. I'll stick a link to it in the description. I'll link it anyway, because I think this Yikong is well worth checking out. Guys, thanks for watching. Throw me a like, and I'll catch you again right here on RCTNT. Cheers.